Welcome everyone. This is our first PC motherboard that my father brought probably around 1990. This is a Intel SX25, although I think it's written 20. But I remember we had the 25 and this quartz here is 50. So I guess we brought it overclocked, huh? Well, I find it interesting that we still had it in the basement. You see my father already clipped off his battery. So you can see the battery leaked. And the PCB traces are already eroded away there. So I wanted to see if we can solder there some wires also. Obviously the keyboard connector is corroded as well. But I will not deal with the keyboard connector today. I only want to see if soldering there some wires makes this host again. So after looking a little bit around, I finally found the manufacturer Octec and the board being a Panther 2, 386SX. Was, did not expect it written there between the slots I was looking here all over. And also this might be slightly newer than I saw. It's not 1990, it's apparently maybe 91 December or something like that. Plus minus a little bit. So let's see. I will probably tin this here. As you can see there are some even until, even behind the keyboard connector, there are PCB lines missing. So that's for sure a little bit to solder there. And yeah, let's see how much we need to solder to get this working. Actually way harder than it looks on Mac motherboards at Louis Rossmann. So I hot aired here the DIN connector for the keyboard off of the PCB to get a better understanding where the PCB traces are running here. So I guess I will probably measure in a second, but I think this is probably main ground and voltage missing here. So this here is one coming here. So you see here are from here are two coming. And they go here under the SIM tray. Here's one totally missing that went here to there, I guess. And here, obviously, the area of the battery here is totally missing. And it also flew here then under the keyboard connector. To my surprise, so we have 12 volt here, as well as. Minus 12 here is so I think the only thing is so this is minus 5 which we hopefully don't need which is not present on this SFX power supply but what did we got here so at the battery terminal we got 5 nearly and the other one so here is 12 and that it's also present here and this here yeah and this was a minus five which we don't have so i wanted to quickly check here with the isaac pinout what we have on the isa sockets and so here is ground this we can only this we can only measure with resistance to ground then something so one two so this is five the third should be 5, okay, that we have. Then we should minus 5, which we will not have from this power supply, yeah, that's that line. But I'm surprised that this corroded stuff is maybe going through there or it's coming from somewhere else as well. But then we have this voltages, so maybe then there is something with a resistor, so it's some transistor doing some reset thing or so, that this doesn't come up. So unfortunately, although I have there are quite some traces, this still doesn't work. So, also one going to the back side there. So getting this to work ain't that easy. And of course best with the second board to compare. But I will stop for today and maybe continue in the winter or... Holy, it's doing something. Um, not sure if we can still save it. There is my digital scope sending. 
It did not beep the last minutes while I was measuring on the address pins, but I saw there were some TTL levels jumping around that looked like address memory access. But it didn't beep there. I even put the speaker here. No idea why it just started to beep now, because I had it already connected for some minute. Only when I was now measuring the reset line here with the probe of the digital scope, it started to beep. We can actually test if if it will do this again now without holding the probe there. Hmm. Now does it? Strange. Anyway, let me check what three beeps are. Maybe memory. And then let's see if we really can get life out of it again. So unfortunately three beeps are A64 memory failure. In case we are unlucky that too much acid flew under the Sockets here, maybe I should really try wash this port and distilled water with vinegar or something. But yeah, a pity that we are so close. The only other thing I could try, remove all the dip memory and try to insert SIM memory. But yeah, so much to that. As we get this memory error, I took all the dill memory here, the dual inline memory out, and tried a SIM module that also didn't work. Still, the three beeps for the base 64k error. Then I unsoldered here, even with hot air, the ZIM modules. I did not yet bother to clean this up. I wanted to see how much corrosion we have there, and there apparently was not really so much more. Unfortunately, my next best guess is that there is maybe some corrosion there, maybe some PCB line missing, as I think this is the first memory bank, so I would need to unsolder this one, but at least some soldering practice for today. The rest I may continue this winter or something. It was still an interesting exercise to see. Look at the clock signals here with the scope and see this wiring here. Also by the way, the first one here is a power good pin, and this is this trace, the small one going there, where I soldered a wire. Actually, I have to wonder if they intentionally run the power good line here under the battery because this is just this trace here that is, you may see there the last remains of it that I soldered onto there. And as far as I know, they should probably generate the reset signal, so I really wonder if this is coincidence or if they have intentionally run the power good signal wire so that it's the first that is eaten by the acid from the battery. Anyway, fun little soldering in the lunch and coffee break. I hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe for all the next videos that are coming. And by the way, so this Opti thing there is a 386 SX system controller thing that is also doing the memory bank interleaving and row column access signal generation. And this is an integrated system controller thing that is including the classic PC, DMA, interrupt um, and whatnot controller. Interesting to get a better understanding of those circuits that I couldn't internet search when I was a child.